Hey guys, back working on the truck. Um, got it flipped around again, and uh, today we're going to be mounting the bed. So to mount the bed, I'm going to need to make a framework that it will sit on. Um, it's going to end up sitting a little bit higher than I'd probably want to, but that's because I'm not using a pickup chassis. I'm using the S10 Blazer chassis. So um, the frame right there, that's the highest point on the frame. So that's kind of has to be where the floor would sit on the bed. Um, so the floor can't go any lower than that. So the bed sides are going to probably be about here. I've got it mopped up with uh, some winches from the ceiling. And uh, basically what I'm going to do is make some uh, rails that attach to the frame rails to then support the box. And to do that, I have a new tool. So I just picked up this guy. Um, it came in today, which is why I'm able to actually do this. Uh, no longer in the box. I, did, I didn't do an unboxing. Um, it's sitting over there on the floor. Uh, interesting thing with this, though, is uh, I guess they care about safety or uh, something, but um, it came with some really hideous um, middle school chemistry safety goggles. And somewhere in here, there, earplugs. So they at least care about that. Uh, I have better safety glasses and I have better hearing protection, so. We're going to be using that. But uh, anyway, there, you kind of get a vibe. So, yeah. Basically, first I'm going to do is uh, winch that up again, and then we're going to start on my rails. I already uh, kind of marked out how far they're going to go. So, um, you can sort of see that bracket for the leaf spring. Uh, the furthest forward edge is about as far as this guy sits. So I'm going to use that as my safe starting point. So yeah, let's uh, lift this guy up and um, start building the frame. All right, got that all lifted up. So now I can see what I'm really working with. Um, and I know I remember this from before, but I never really paid too much attention. But um, from here, Back, the frame rails are different. This one goes up and that one goes down. I assume because this is was designed to follow the floor and that one was there to uh, clear that filler neck. So um, when I was plotting this out I was mostly only looking at that side but uh, not really too worried about it. But uh, what I am going to do is basically make a subframe out of some angle iron. I've got some two inch angle. Um, the bed itself is five and a half feet long. And so I'm going to basically cut two five and a half foot long sections of angle. And then I'm going to run a piece left to right back here and up there. Um, the rear one is going to go basically from here to here and kind of be a place where I can weld some stuff in to tie in this corner of that box to keep that nice and stable. And the front is just going to be as wide as it really needs to be um, as far as for the rest of the support. So I'm going to go ahead on that and get started. And uh, yeah, so um, time to uh, use the new Yeah, Yeah, time to use the new saw. So I've got both sides cut down. Um, this partic each particular side is actually uh, five foot five inches because I'm gonna. The, bed, the bed's going to stick a little bit forward of it, um, and I didn't want to have anything get too close to the cab. And then I've also got a little bit back here 
for um, the, the brace to go across. Um, I did kind of just uh, change up my design a little bit. Um, so what I'm going to actually do is make this as a uh, just kind of a rectangular box. I'm going to do that on the floor. Um, I've got this sitting an inch away on both sides. I'm going to run a piece of rectangular tubing from there to there, the same width as the frame rail, and then another piece um, up front. The front piece may be uh, still be a piece of angle iron, depends on how much uh, material I have left. Uh, the reason being is that I'm going to use the angle iron to bridge the gap between here and there, and that will nest over top of all of that. Um, I'm not going to weld it to the sides. Uh, I am going to just make that bolt on because I do like kind of, I mean, hey, the bed was designed to be bolted on and, bolt, and unbolted. I don't really want to change that by welding it. Uh, the other thing is uh, my angle cube just turned off, but I have this set to two degrees uh, raked forward, which is about what the chassis is doing. Um, so I had taken a measurement off the bottom of the chassis and it was two inches. So that's probably where we're going to, or two degrees. So that's probably about where we're going to go. Um, I'm going to kind of mess with that a little bit in that I'm going to, again, make that as a rectangle, S roughly set it where I want it, probably tack it in place. Then I'm going to drop the bed down and I'm going to stand back and stare at it. If it looks weird, I'll change it. If it looks good, then I'll burn it in and it'll, that's how it'll be. So yeah, let's uh, keep plugging away. night and it looks like I ran out of space on the card so fresh card uh, ready to go uh, so basically now what I got to do is lay that on the frame rail um, one other thing I did notice is while the bottom of the frame rail is slanted to about two degrees down the body line on the actual cab seems to be pretty horizontal so ideally I'd want bed rail to match the uh, that body line on the body or on the cab so we'll see how it goes uh, I'm gonna start by kind of mocking the uh, the frame up at a two degree down slope to match the frame and if that looks weird then I'll raise it up to where it's neutral or like a half a degree so uh, yeah let's uh, get that big rectangle hung on the frame <coughs> If I were smarter, I would remove the battery. I'll probably do that eventually. Oh, that fits like a glove. Beautiful. So, as you can see, I've got that laid on here. Um, I'm very happy I made it an extra eighth of an inch wider than I thought I did, because I think that's going to be about perfect. Um, so yeah, let me I'm gonna clamp it in place right here, because that's going to be our rearmost pivot. Or I won't. Um, so yeah, let's take the trusty angle cube. And right now we've got a four degree down slope. So what I'm going to do is get my tape measure. 
I'm going to just angle this guy up until we've got about a two-ish degree. So right there seems about right. And then uh, I've got this piece of scrap left over um, from uh, the piece in the back. And what I'm going to do is just fold it right where I need it. We're going to scribe a line across it, and I'm going to cut it. Then um, just kind of mock it up. We're going to drop the bed down and take a look at it. Okay, take it to the chop saw. Okay, there it is. Let's uh, try to stand back and see how that looks. You know, it doesn't look half bad. So we're going to ignore the back because that on the driver's side, that side hasn't been supported with rod like this one has. <clears throat> but I will say that rail, I do have that slight rake to it. And we go right here. That doesn't look too terrible. Um, I think I might raise it up just a little bit so I can make it maybe half, a degree and a half or a degree. And then I think it might look about perfect. Uh, it's going to look goofy from this angle because that tapers in. So it looks like it's angling down, but it's actually angling this way. Um, the best judge, I think, is going to be from back here. And pretty good, but yeah, again, I think I'm going to lift it up just teensy bit, so like, well, I'll put something underneath that and we'll see. So that's looking much better. Though I did take a measurement off that door. The door is sitting at half a degree canted canted downwards so I think I might want to actually I think I do want to match that um, that way it will look consistent it doesn't look bad right now but I can tell that that's going down and that almost looks like it's going up as a result so I'm going to stick with the half a degree we're going to basically do exactly what I did already um, I'm going to kind of cut the bits I need for that, tack weld them on, um, measure again, make sure it's square left to right as well, do the far corner, and then uh, we'll burn it in. Okay, so I've got it mostly squared up, um, pretty close. It is um, centered left to right. Um, this side is about the right angle. Um, and I've got the rear squared up. So from here to here, to, from here to the bumper is exactly one inch on both sides. Um, I did actually, I guess I did have too much of an overhang because it doesn't actually sit flush against the frame. Um, there's actually an eighth inch spacer on each side. Um, just some eighth inch plate. Uh, this guy is tacked in that is touching right there. This is the highest point on the frame. So that's, that's my limiting factor. And uh, that side is a little bit lower. So it's going to be a little bit weird. But basically what I'm doing is inch from here, this is level flush with the bumper. It just kind of happened to work out that way. And I've got this end stacked up with some box section and a couple bits of angle iron as a shim. And I think there's a piece of sheet metal under there. To make that perfect. So what I'm going to do, since this rear is tight, is going to be, is pretty much dead nuts on, 
Um, I've got, I cut these sections of angle. These are going to be my brackets. I'm going to weld that in there like so. Um, probably just a little bit inboard so I can get some good penetration along there. Um, do that on both sides and then I can tweak the front to get it nice and squared up with this, get it symmetrical with the chassis because the chassis should be symmetric, uh, at least for the bit from those mounts to where the cab sits. That should be pretty symmetric. Um, and then I'll burn in those two vertical mounts. And then um, I'll start welding it down the side and I might actually even add some extra bracing right here. Um, the thing to remember is again, this bed's not going to carry too much weight. It's more for style and um, the way it sits, it's also going to be uh, probably sitting above those guys. So I'll have to make some weird notches or I'm going to raise the floor up a lot. Um, still going to run the tailgate that sits about right. So that'll all be hidden. But uh, yeah, so time to at least weld those first brackets in. Also, I'm going to put a welding blanket over the gas tank because I don't like explosions. <laughs> Finish welding that in. Okay, so got the back end welded um, after that little snafu with the bed. Um, and then I went a little bit further ahead and welded these guys into place, the uprights. They're not attached to the platform bit, they're just welded to the frame. Kind of eyeballed them so that they're nice and square. Um, should be close enough. Uh, so, what I'm going to do next is uh, take those clamps off. Um, actually, it looks like that clamp is off. But take those clamps off, set this angle. Um, this is actually sitting a little bit low. So this is, um, I really wanted it to have that one, you know, like half to one degree rake. Uh, this is now sitting at like two. I don't know how that happened. But um, so that's, so anyway, rear is uh, sat in there. Uh, basically, what I'm going to do is lift this up because at the end of the day, this piece doesn't need to be sitting on this. And actually, because of the uh, inside fillet on a piece of angle iron, it doesn't anyway. So I'm going to lift it up just enough, um, clamp it in place, and weld. Uh, as far as getting it left to right, nice and square, uh, what I'm going to do is uh, I don't have a plumb bob, but I do have some string and some stuff, some heavy stuff. So I'm going to hang a plumb bob basically off of this corner and then measure to this face right here. Um, make sure they're both the same on both sides. Once they are, I'll weld them in place. Or once they are, then I'll weld it in place up there. So that's about what I'm doing. So uh, yeah, once again, going to get back to it. Okay, so this is my plumb bob. Um, Turns out this is basically flush with that. So it kind of helps, but it kind of doesn't because this sticks out a little bit further. So I decided to hold it right there and measure against the frame right next to that upper rivet. And both sides are pretty darn close. They're both about three and five eighths. Um, this is just a skosh more. Um, but being a 16th off doesn't really bother me too much, so we'll go with that. Um, so yeah, uh, basically I am going to 
it's pretty much uh, in place. So you've got it clamped in, it's square. This is, this is level, that's parallel. The whole truck sits a little bit crooked. I think the floor is just a little bit off. Um, so they're both about a degree angled this way, but this and that are like 0.05 of a degree off. So that's pretty darn good. So yeah, um, got the clamps in place. I'm gonna just weld it in and then hope for the best. Then I can drop this guy down and we'll see how she looks. Is it welded in, clamps removed. And uh, so yeah, there we go. And uh, let's just appreciate how good those welds were. That one's acceptable, but still pretty good, good penetration. Um, I did that completely blind, as you just saw. Um, <laughs> I did that purely by feel, so I think that's pretty good. Um, those ones are much, much better because, well, I actually, you know, could see. And uh, same with these guys in the back. So those are looking pretty good. Um, at least, you know, by my standards of being a fairly skilled amateur as far as welding goes. But, so that is now attached, not final welded, but because I'm gonna add some more bracing, but um, it's enough to test the uh, position of the bed. If it's not good, I'm gonna, I guess, cut those brackets off and uh, redo it. But uh, I think we're gonna be pretty good. So there it is sitting down on the frame so pretty in pretty on there pretty square um, next thing I'm gonna do is basically drill some holes through there um, I'm gonna probably just drill a hole straight through and then enlarge the uh, bit on the top so I can drop the bolt head through um, <clears throat> And then this guy, and this guy will be mounted. But either way, uh, it's getting late right now, so I'm not going to completely uh, bolt the bed in. But um, you kind of get the gist of what I'm going to do. So I'll show you that later. But uh, for now, I think this is going to be the end of the video because it is getting late. All right, guys, that's all for now. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Also, it should be known, the quality of the grinder. I shut that grinder off before I just filmed the last segment, and that's been still spinning for over a minute. So, um, good job, DeWalt. There's some good bearings in there. My face has gotten so dirty today. Hold on.